Most of these eerie things are absolutely impossible on our planet, even in the wildest imagination. But as practice shows, what is impossible with us is still possible on other planets. Let's look at ordinary rain as an example. Rain is usually cold and gloomy and very, very wet. And in general, the Earth's rain, well, it's boring. The rain of stones on planet Korat 7b, however, is quite another matter. We wouldn't be bored there. It's very, very hot on one half of this strange space object. The surface temperature reaches 4,700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 2,600 degrees Celsius. And that's more than enough to make the rocks melt and then evaporate like puddles of water here on Earth. At the same time, the other half of the planet is relatively cool at about 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 1,900 degrees Celsius. So, the rocks evaporate and then condense into huge stone clouds under the hellish temperatures on the hot half of the planet. And then these clouds fall as rains of magma heading back to the surface. On the relatively cooler side of the planet, the rain made of magma solidifies into stones before hitting the surface. This is real stone rain. Can you imagine seeing this with your own eyes? But wait, this next place will astonish you even more. HD 189773b is an exoplanet located 63 light years from us. It's slightly larger than Jupiter in size, and most likely you will agree with me if I say that it looks awesome. Can you possibly imagine what horror lies behind all this beauty? Its fantastic appearance is due to the fact that the atmosphere of the planet consists mainly of silicate particles. Think sand or glass. It also rains at a temperature of 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 930 degrees Celsius. And it has winds that often reach 5,400 miles per hour. That's 8,700 kilometers per hour, which is seven times faster than the speed of sound. This is even more terrifying than the rains on the previous planet. Here, they're as clean as glass. Just imagine the scene. Clouds are coming from behind the horizon. Echoes of thunder crack through. The wind surges to a speed of 1.24 miles per second. And finally, the sky explodes with pouring rain. Masses of glass are tearing through the atmosphere and into you at insane speeds. If such a storm suddenly arose on Earth at the same wind speed, it would fly around our planet at the equator in just 5 hours and 33 minutes. Local residents would feel it quite powerfully. But speaking of winds, really, this is nothing. This puny little storm is just a breeze compared to the wind that blows on planet HD 189733b. The temperature on the solar-facing side of the gas giant often reaches a mind-boggling 1770 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature on the dark side is usually no lower than 1270 degrees Fahrenheit or about 700 degrees Celsius. The small temperature difference between the two sides is due to the extremely fast winds, which here reach a fantastic 21,747 miles per hour, which is 6 miles or 10 kilometers per second, almost 29 times faster than the speed of sound. That's some wind. As I said in one of my past videos, the fastest wind ever recorded on Earth was during a tornado in Oklahoma in 1999, and its speed reached just 300 miles per hour, which is 73 times less than the usual average breeze on HD 189733b. If you had wings, or a parachute, or even just a normal umbrella, you could fly around the entire planet in about an hour and eight minutes just by opening that umbrella. But something tells me that your body would probably suffer some terrible indignities long before that. Stones falling from the sky, 5400 degree temperature, glass rain faster than the speed of sound. You know, the more I learn about this, the less I have doubts about the existence of hell. I left off early the last episode on the topic of shadows, so let's continue. Let's imagine that there's a place where the rays from two suns wake you up in the morning. You could also watch two or even three sunsets at almost the same time in the evening. Previously, it seemed like a fantasy and was possible only in Star Wars. 
until we discovered the amazing Kepler-16b exoplanet, which orbits in a system of two stars in the Cygnus constellation. Two suns rise and set on the horizon of this planet. And if my shadow was suffering the despair of loneliness here on Earth, then on Kepler-16b it would have a friend. Although, most likely, if I could somehow teleport to this planet, then in a moment I would certainly die from the heat and lack of air. But if you allow me the luxury of a super-duper spacesuit, and I somehow stayed alive, in general, two suns and two shadows is certainly cool, but not as cool as three suns and three shadows. Astronomers have discovered an even more amazing object, HD 13199AB, relatively recently. This new planet broke all previous records. It revolves around three suns at once. It also has a giant mass, four times larger than Jupiter's, and an unusually long orbit. A one-year revolution of the exoplanet around its three stars takes 550 of our terrestrial years. And as the planet spins quite slowly, the three suns only descend from the sky in about half of this time. Imagine that you wouldn't see a single sunset for 275 years. This all happens 340 light years from our Earth, which is 300 light years further than our next exhibit, the planet ocean Gliese 1214 b. You all know that water occupies 70% of the surface of our planet, but in our case it's only 0.005% of the total mass of our planet. Scientists believe that on our distant neighbor, water could be up to 10% of the total mass of the whole planet. This means that Gliese 1214 b is completely covered covered by a huge ocean reaching hundreds of kilometers in depth. The planet is 2.5 times the Earth's radius and approximately 6.5 times larger by mass. If you look at all those creations that live in our Earth's oceans, which is less than 6.8 miles in depth, it's scary even to imagine what monsters could hide in this terrible place. But most likely these monsters exist there only in my imagination. In fact, the bottom of this huge ocean is under such incredible pressures that life there is, in principle, impossible. It's known only that the water at the bottom of this mega-ocean could likely be an exotic form of ice, known as Ice 7. However, all my searches for information regarding this strange substance were unsuccessful. I still don't understand what the reality of this ice really is, in addition to the fact that it doesn't look like ice in the usual, normal, earthly sense, as it is apparently not cold at all, but is still solid in form. If you have a broader knowledge regarding this topic, please tell me about it in the comments. And for dessert, the last planet. A real hell here, my friends. Many stars can't even boast of the same high temperature of which the planet Kelt 9b is burning. Approximately every one and a half days, this planet, the size of our Jupiter, makes a complete revolution around its star. This star at the moment is one of the biggest stars near which scientists have managed to find planets. The A-class blue giant star Kelt 9, whose age is estimated at about 300 million years, is approximately twice as large and twice as hot as our sun. Because of its giant size, the planet Kelt 9b, which rotates in the immediate vicinity of this super hot reactor of a star, is heated to an incredible temperature of 7800 degrees Fahrenheit about 4,300 degrees Celsius. This is fantastically hot, as it's within spinning distance of the temperature of the surface of our own sun at 9,900 degrees Fahrenheit. Most stars of the spectral classes F, G, K, and M do not exceed 1,300 degrees Fahrenheit, and only representatives of classes B and O get above 18,000. Thus, the exoplanet discovered by Scott Gowdy with the help of a pair of Kelt telescopes turns out to be hotter than many stars. I don't know about you, but I just can't get this amazing fact out of my head. But this is not the end. They dress up in eccentric suits with wings, climb to some very high point, the tip of a steep rock on some mountaintop is just about right, and they jump. I don't know what these kamikazes are thinking, flying at insane speeds just a few meters from the protruding rocks and trees, but it looks simply just plain terrifying. Then the parachute opens. 
the adrenaline surge peaks, and with unforgettable emotions, his feet finally find firm ground underneath. And yet, the most incredible feeling of all was when he defeated the old man with the scythe, death himself. They say you really begin to appreciate life only moments from death. This is called base jumping here on Earth, one of the most extreme and dangerous sports. I don't know about you, but in my eyes, these crazy daredevils with wings look like superheroes. But you know what's even more fun? There's a place where all this devilry would look like no more than an innocuous walk in the park. This place is right here in our solar system, 71 light minutes from Earth, 9.3 billion miles from our blue-green ball. If some daredevil wanted to repeat such a jump on Titan, he could make it all the way around this picturesque moon of Saturn. A dense atmosphere combined with low gravity makes this place a superb candidate for the resettlement of Homo sapiens in the future. Just imagine what mind-blowing entertainment could be invented under such fantastic conditions. I would finally be able to realize my most cherished dream, to ascend into the air like a bird and soar. As you already know, it's not only birds that can fly. We just have to figure out how to get to Titan, and also how to make a cozy little nest there. And this, believe me, will not be easy. The fact is that in addition to all these bonuses awaiting future colonists, Titan has prepared for us a good little bundle of troubles. But this place is quite impressive, there's an atmosphere here. Moreover, it's one and a half times denser than our terrestrial one, and this is about as good as it gets. The force of gravity is one-seventh that of the Earth. Yes, Titan is even smaller than our moon. This means that a person could potentially just walk around on the surface of Titan in nothing more than some simple scuba gear, which is also very, very not bad. But now comes the pain. First, it's terribly chilly. The temperature of the Titan atmosphere is minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. This is in addition to the fact that the average wind speed reaches as much as 20 miles per second. This means that walking on the surface can really only be possible in the vicinity of a powerful heating installation, probably with a nuclear or a thermonuclear reactor. Also, this super dense atmosphere does not contain precious oxygen, but contains such very cheerful substances as cyanogen and cyanic acid. This means that the atmosphere is not just unfit for breathing, but is poisonous and at the first opportunity will try to kill you. Consequently, all shelters on Titan should be completely hermetically sealed, and at the entrances and exits must have airlocks that do a complete and thorough replacement of the air. Since this is a world full of hydrocarbons, but with an oxygen deficit, which would be needed to burn the hydrocarbons, energy and transport on Titan will be arranged quite differently from that here on Earth. The substance acetylene, which decomposes with the release of heat, is at the bottom of Titan's lakes. It could be used as fuel, as an analog for coal and gasoline. Neither solar nor hydro energy will be much of an option. Hydropower won't be so effective as the rivers on Titan move very slowly. Wind power might be a good option, but beyond that, uranium will be needed for nuclear reactors for heating for settlers. And unfortunately, it's lacking on both Titan and in the Saturnian system as a whole. There are practically no heavy elements and metals, so most likely they will have to be delivered from asteroids. The best transport solution is airplanes, helicopters, and airships, considering the dense atmosphere and very low gravity. By the way, an inhabited base filled with oxygen at a pressure of one atmosphere may well be lighter than titanium air, so that it could become similar to an airship. Imagine how cool it would be to live in such a flying city. Since there's no global ocean, rivers and lakes periodically dry out, so water transport is immediately thrown into the background, although with special need it could be used from time to time. If you use acetylene as a fuel, wheeled vehicles are also possible, but there will be a variety of problems with this, including wet sand, rough terrain, and of course, the wind. Therefore, it will be more expedient to use railways with trains on magnetic cushions for cargo transportation. My space broadcast comes to an end for today. Thank you for watching.
반드시 채널을 등록해주세요. 새로운 영상이 등록되면 바로 확인하실 수 있습니다.